Yes, tonight is in his fifth season as the head football coach of Marshall. His team is sitting at 4 0 as they get ready to travel to Old Dominion Saturday. I am joined by Doc Holliday. Doc, good to have you on. How are you? Doing great, Jim. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Doc. Thanks so much. You're coming off a big win over the Ohio the previous week. So, what was your message to the team going into Saturday's matchup? With hey, Dad. Hey, Hey, go, well, you know, our hey, go, you know, we got to do a great go, job of preparation during the week. Hey, go, you know, I had great yes. respect for that Akron football team. You know, I played with Terry Bowden at West Virginia, of course, for his dad years ago. Yeah, and, uh, Chuck Amata I'd worked with at NC State, so I know they're going to be a well-coached football team. I had the opportunity to watch them against Penn State. They played Penn State extremely tough. Should have gone and beaten Michigan a year ago at Michigan, so I knew they had some really good players. They were very athletic. I knew they had some very good play. And so I would imagine you challenged them. They respond nicely. Now, it's still early, but if you had to say, Doc, how different is this group than the one who won 10 games and the military bowl against Maryland last season? Well, they're, they're a more mature group. You know, we got all those guys back, Jim. Uh, we got great leadership on this football team. And, uh, you know, Cato's a much better quarterback. He probably doesn't have the stats that he had a year ago or even a year prior to that. But, you know, he's making just tremendous decisions. He's run the offense extremely well. And uh, the biggest difference in this year and last year, we got some outside receivers on the outside. They're able to make some plays, which is helping open up Tommy on the inside. And our running game's been good. All right, so what about Cato? You and I have talked in the past, Doc. But tell me about Cato. He was campus. He was obviously very good than he is right now. What was he like football? I don't when he first arrived on campus. No, he was a guy, you, talk, you have talked before about him, and uh, you know, he was a guy for 18 years that was never told when to go to bed, when to get up, uh, when to go to school or anything, you know, he grew up very tough, uh, went through a lot of adversity in his life, and uh, he's a tremendous kid that's his most competitive kid I've ever been associated with, and uh, he's a, he just grown up so much as far as the leadership role, the intangible takes to be a great quarterback, and uh, I'm just glad he's on our side because he's making, he's making a lot of really good plays for us. Yeah, Doc, go back to something else you and I have talked about, but I'm struck by that once again. You just said, once again, he's the most competitive kid you've been around. Not, not the best player you've been around, but the most competitive kid you've been around. You've been around some pretty competitive guys, too. Guys like Tim Tebow, and he really marks Cato's that competitive, isn't he? Well, there's no doubt. I mean, Philip Rivers, probably the two greatest leaders I've ever been around were Philip Rivers, NC State, and uh, Tim Tebow at Florida. And I'm not saying that Cato is with those two guys, but he is more competitive than both those guys, which is hard to believe because both those guys were extremely competitive and had great careers. But he's a really competitive guy that tries to win at every snap, whether it's practice or in a game. And, you know, you watch the way he prepares throughout the week in order to go play, and you can see why he makes the decisions that he does. It's extremely high praise. All right, let's talk about the program for a minute. I mean, this is a program with tremendous history. How much time do you spend talking to your players about that? And what are the types of conversations you have with them? Well, you know, it is, it is probably a great history. I, I, told, I think the last time you and I talked, I told you that I've only, I only had three jobs in my entire career, which is unusual in this business. But, you know, I was at West Virginia for a lot of years. I was at NC State for five with Chuck, went to Urban, won a national championship in Florida. But there's not a football program in America that means more to the fan base than what Marshall does because of what happened with the crash in 1970. And coming back to become the winningest team in college football in the 90s and early 2000s. And, you know, our fan base, uh, you know, we, we lost that for about a 12-year period there. We started to get it back a year ago. And right now our fans are extremely excited. Our community's excited. Our school's excited. And it's our job as a football team to make sure we keep them that way. All right, so, Doc, so far so good. You're 4-0 in the season. There's a ton of football still to be played. But the way the system is set up right now, we know we've got that playoff at the end of the year. I know you'll tell me one day at a time. I respect it. I get it. But if you take care of business, do you feel like you will be at the table when it's time to have that big meal, so to speak? Well, you know, I don't think there's any question. You know, we just have to play them one at a time. We can't be concerned ourselves with our schedule or anything there. But the one thing I will tell you, Jim, we do have a seat at the table right now. I mean, this team went undefeated in, uh, in the late 90s with Byron Leftwich and all those guys and ended up in the Motor City Bowl. That's not the case right now. I mean, if you take care of business and you play extremely well, uh, you do what you're supposed to do, whether it's our conference or the, uh, the AA conference or, or the WAC or the MAC or whatever. At some point, if you take care of business, you're the highest-ranked team in that, those uh, non-Power 5 conferences, then you'll have a seat at the table somewhere. So we just got to concern ourselves with trying to get better every day, every week. And uh, for, up to this point, we've done that, and we got to make sure that continues. So far, so good. Doc, good to visit with you once again. Thank you very much. Good luck to you. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. When we come back.